Hey guys, looks like it's beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Shorts Brew, or Shorts Brewing. Let me give you their official name here. Shorts Brewing Company, and these guys are out of Michigan. They're out of uh, Bel Air, Michigan. And this is a 7%, uh, they call it Cup of Joe Coffee Cream Stout. Uh, says here, stout brewed with coffee and milk sugar, which is lactose, and the perfect morning slash night capper. And the 7%, you probably could drink this on a weekend uh, uh, for breakfast or with breakfast. Uh, me, I choose not to. I don't drink beer for breakfast, guys. Uh, even on the weekends, I do not. I'm an evening night kind of beer drinking guy. I don't drink beer for breakfast, period. Uh, if I did, I'd be back in the bed and be sawing logs again. So, uh, I don't do it. I just don't do it. Some of you young bucks out there might want to try this and do it for breakfast, but this guy, not so much. So, uh, he tells me here, he's got a list of an 8%. I don't think it's an 8%er unless they've changed the recipe on this one, and I don't see it on there. Uh, and I don't know where he got that information from, because I do not see the ABV listed on there, and if they've changed the recipe, they do need to put that on there, and the reason they don't, so that they can use the same label over year after year if they don't have the ABV on it, and if it changes, so, uh, I'm not exactly sure, Rico sent me this beer, and he's telling me it's an 8%er, uh, Beer Advocate has it at 7. I mean, Red Bear has it at 7. Beer Advocate has it at 8. And Untapped has it at 8 also. So maybe it is an 8%er. I don't know if I'd want to drink an 8%er for breakfast now, guys. 7%? Uh, pushing it. And the 6 and the 5%? Yeah, you could probably get away with it, especially on the weekend. But an 8%er for breakfast? You have your buzz going on after you drink this for breakfast, no doubt. No doubt about it. He tells me here, um, coffee stout brew with higher grounds, roasted fair trade espresso beans and milk sugar. He tells me it's 35 IBUs, no date. Picked up for 250 And he got their info from their site, which I never do. I never go to the, the official beer sites. And the guy said, well, why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Because they're a little on the buy side. They're going to tell you some stuff that... Well, then we'll just leave it at that. Maybe I should. Maybe I should look it up on uh, each one of these uh, uh, beer sites, but I do not. I never have. Occasionally, I'll look something up. I can't find nothing else anywhere else. I'll go there, but normally I do not. 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't go to the people that brew the beer's website. And maybe that'll change down the road. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we'll see what happens with that, guys. So... Uh, and they're telling me here on Untapped it's 35 IBUs, for, uh, and that's very low. And that's probably pretty typical for a lactose stout, a uh, milk stout, a uh, cream stout on top of that. So, uh, and I've had some uh, beers sent to me from Shorts. I cannot get them here uh, over the years, and I've done several of them. So, uh, And they seem to be a, a pretty decent beer company. So uh, let's see what this one brings to the table. So let's step over and see what they're telling us here on uh, Great Beer. 
says a cup of Joe cream stout uses higher grounds roasted for trade and special beans in every facet of the brewing process. Prominent aromatics of malt, espresso, and cocoa are abundant, and there are robust flavors of cream and coffee. This is a perfect morning slash night capper. Well, it's going to be a night capper for me, guys. Final beer of the evening for me today. Today's January the 1st, 2017. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, you won't see this one for a while, uh, sometime in January, maybe even February before it even posts. So, uh, while I get the cap off of this, I will tell you, it says general, food pairings are general, chocolate dessert. But same thing about breakfast, but it could be your uh, dessert for breakfast, if you have dessert with breakfast. And on top, it's still got the price tag he's up on there, it's $2.50, that's what he paid for. It. Nice little hiss. Last part of Pint Becker, now I'm going to come to Mug Style Sidell. I'm using my favorite Cooler Blast. I'm going to go down the center on this one, guys. And it says here, not recommended for extended cellaring, but 8% uh, is going to keep for a little while as far as the alcohol content is, but brewed with coffee. Uh, those, that usually fades over time, guys. So that's another reason why you would want to drink it fresh and why we want to have the date on there. So you know you're getting a fresh beer and the coffee's still going to be there. If so, something is set on the shelf for six, eight months, 12 months, and you're buying it, think, oh man, a coffee stout. And the coffee is faded by then. Just like an IPA or double IPA. Put the damn date it was bottled or canned on, on the bottle, and let us make the decision when we want to drink it. Please use that, guys. Put the bottle on date, and then we'll do it. When you put no date whatsoever on it, it gives it an infinite shelf life. And then you end up buying it and it's been sitting on the shelf for a year and you can't find any copy and you're uh, disappointed and you don't buy the beers anymore. I don't know, understand why they don't get that. Uh, but I guess they think there's enough suckers out there that they're, they're going to sell it. So, just my two cents. Uh, down the center, it didn't pour a massive head and it's just barely covering the beer. Over into the light, uh, pretty dark. Looks like a typical stout guy. not getting any light through it at all. Very dark. Black, 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 black. Let's get a nose on it. Rich roasted malt. Does have a slight sweetness to the back end. Hints of espresso coffee. It's not uh, blowing me away with the coffee notes, but there is coffee in there. I can smell it. it smells pretty good. It does smell pretty good. I will give it that. So let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Now, on the taste guide, the coffee is there. Front seat. The whole front seat. It's driving the bus. Big coffee nuts. It's not super creamy. It does have a nice mouthfeel to it. I wouldn't say it's thin, but I wouldn't say it's full. Uh, probably medium. And I'm going to take a look here. And it does have something stamped on it. And it is almost impossible to see. It's been smudged off, guys. I see a 10. And then the date code has been smudged off. It looked like it was there at one time, but it is gone now. And then there's a time stamp on it. So, and I can wipe the code off with my finger. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's a shame. They need to do something about their dating machine. The ink rubs off very easily, guys. Wow. Of course, an 8% stout, cream stout, with lactose, is going to keep for a little while. But they, when they're introducing coffee to the beer uh, like this, that coffee will fade over time. So, why we need to see that date, that's why. Because it's just like an IPA. Uh, once it's in the bottle six months or so, and I... And I have found this out because uh, I have tried to sell coffee beers and the coffee fades over time. 
if you drink one fresh, you're going to get a lot more coffee and, uh, than one that's been in the bottle 6, 8, 12 months. So uh, that is one of the things that fades over time. If it didn't have coffee in it and 8% stout, this beer, this beer would keep 3, 5, even 10 years. But with being brewed with coffee and you're wanting to taste that coffee, uh, you need to drink it pretty quick. So uh, the coffee doesn't fade. You get that full espresso. That's what they use on those espresso beans. Now, if you're not a big coffee fan, you're probably not going to like this. There's a lot of people that aren't coffee fans. They doesn't care for it, even though they're stout fans. They're just not coffee fans. So, uh, this depends on what you're after there. Uh, if, if, you don't like, if you don't like coffee, but you're a stout fan, throw it in the cellar for a while. Keep it for a year or so. And those coffee notes will subside a little bit. Uh, they won't be quite as prominent uh, as they are when the beer is fresh. So, well, let's try it out of the fridge. Let's uh, take it back and let her taste it and see what she thinks of it. And uh, sip on it for a little while and see what we end up with. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Got a little bit left here. I've been sitting on about 30 minutes or so. Very tasty. Very tasty. Very well done beer. The only thoughts I've got about this is uh, that easy smeared off date. That they're using on their uh, bottles here and it was smeared off very easy I could rub it off with my finger uh, so if it's been handled or anything like that uh, good chances are you're not going to be able to see the date on it and if they want to use these labels over they could very easily have their dating machine printed on the label instead of on the on the bottle where it can be smeared off so uh, that's the only fuss I got about this beer it's a very nice it's a very creamy beer it's not super creamy, but uh, it does have a nice medium mouthfeel to it. Uh, I am getting the lactose. It has a nice sweetness to the back end. Uh, I am getting the espresso coffee in this. Uh, another reason to have a, a legible date uh, that was put on there when it was bottled instead of an enjoy by or best by date uh, that a lot of the breweries are using. So, uh, And if it, the recipe changes uh, and they want to use the same label over and over from year to year, and they don't want to put the ABV on there, they could just easy put 8% and just put the month and the year on there, not the date. The day is not, it's not critical for this style of beer. They could put 8%, 10, 15. That would tell us it's an 8%er and what month and year that it was put in the bottle. Just my two cents, guys. So uh, let's do the final chug here. Wonderful aroma. The alcohol is very well hidden. It's a very, it's a, it's a very well made beer. It is. Very tasty. A great beer for the final beer of the evening, which it is for me. Final chug. Very nice slicing. Just leave it on the glass. A very tasty beer, guys. Uh, in my opinion, with the date being so easily smudged off and not having an APB on it anywhere, I do think it's an A beer, but those two things kind of cut it down a notch or two. So I'm going to give this an 8, which is an A minus. Uh, numeric rate on this, guys, would be a 90 for me. Uh, it is a tasty beer, though. It is it's very well. Don't know if I'd want to drink this for breakfast, though. 8%. Alcohol is very well hidden. Uh, if you do drink it for breakfast, do it on the weekend when you're not working. Uh, eight percenter. You go into work drinking this during the week, eh, you might give in a little bit of trouble there. So, uh, let's go over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says it is ninety in their outstanding range. That's exactly where I would put it uh, at to ninety. And over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer is usually a little inflated. They have overall ninety-seven and ninety-nine in the style. Those numbers are a little heavy to me. And for our final check-in, we'll run over to Untapped. Untapped has it at 4.93, which is at the very tip-top of their B+, plus, as far as I'm, uh, I'm concerned. So uh, I don't consider it a nay beer on Untapped until it gets to the full range. So uh, very tasty. I enjoyed it. A great beer uh, for a final beer of the evening. So if you've had this one from uh, Shorts Brewing Company, this is their Cup of Joe Coffee Cream Stout. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. Come on back tomorrow. Let's dig something out of that fridge. See you then.